Hi there and welcome back to the Lally. In today's video, we will look at how we built this 150 cell charging station. I was unable to film this in the building stage because I didn't have my camera with me at the time when we built this. I had it in repairs. So at this part, we have the power supply. To the top here, we have the back modules that we will connect to a solar panel and then back the 18 volts from the solar panel to 5 volts at 20 amps that will go in to charge the boards. And then here we have a regular AC power supply because um, we don't have the solar panels ready yet. So we are using a regular AC power supply and this is a 5 volt 60 amps power supply so this is essentially 300 watts that is that for this part over here we have the breakers so what happens is that the AC power from this socket goes into this first breaker here and then from the first breaker it goes to the power supply and then the power supplies 5 volts at 60 amps goes through this one and then to the board so that is how this whole thing is wired Now let's look at the wiring of this board. So this is a regular PEF board we got from the local market here. And then we got TP4056 battery charging modules. And then we put them in line and then soldered each one together. So 5 volts, 5 volts here positive goes to this 5 volts positive, to this 5 volts positive, to this 5 volts positive. And then the negatives are also connected together exactly in the same manner. And then over here we have the B positive go to um, the first rack the negative of the battery go to the negative of the first base here and then the second board the same all the way to the last battery one module for one battery one module for one battery so that is how this is lined up and that is repeated across this entire board so these are the batteries we've charged so far all of the batteries are charged to either 4.2 or 4.19 <music> So over here you can see these two batteries are fully charged so that is why they are now in the um, standby mode which is the blue so the reds are still charging also in the charging process we found out that these batteries here are bad we can tell that from day overheating during the charging process or they not indicating any charging at all even when you plug them into the, the rack so i'll just plug this one for instance and you can see it is not indicating charging and the battery is not full either so we will check the voltage of this battery. So when you look at this, it's at 1.7 volts. If you plug this in, ideally it should be charging. So it's not charging and it's at 1.7 volts. So this is a bad battery. So for the rest here that are charged, we are going to label them shortly and then write today's date and time on that stamp. And then we'll measure it again, maybe a week or so from now. And then if the battery voltage has dropped from what we recorded when we finished charging, then we would know the batteries are not good and then we'll have to throw them away. Finally, if you want to build a battery charging station like what we have here, there are a few things you should keep in mind. The first thing is all these TP4056 battery modules have a max charging current. So if the programming resistor is set to 1 amp, according to the data sheet, the charging module is going to charge the battery at a peak current of 1 amp. And that also means that if you have four of these like this, all these batteries charging at 1 amp, is four amps total for just one pack like this so if you have 150 of them charging at any point in time it means that there is a high possibility you could be drawing 150 amps total from the entire system so if you have 150 batteries you need to get a power supply that is at least 200 amps to make some space or some room for tolerance so that it doesn't get damaged one way to look at it is you can let one power supply charge this entire lane and then you get another power supply just like this one for the second lane and then charge another 64 or you could just get a bigger power supply that has a bigger amount of current and then um, use that to charge more at a time the third thing you need to do is you need to make sure there is a circuit breaker or you need to get a breaker which will serve as a safety mechanism to make sure that your system does not draw more than it's allowed to and this will also serve 
as a way of protecting your power supply because if the power supply is rated for 100 amps and you get a 90 amps breaker anytime the current goes above 90 amps it is going to trip so then your power supply is safe and everything else is also safe and the final thing is the tp4056 ic's get considerably warm if you plug in a battery that is quite dead so let's just say you plug in a battery that is at 2.9 volts or 3 volts or lower anytime that battery is charging from that voltage all the way to 4.2 it's going to create quite an amount of heat on the ic you would need at least some small form of heat sink on the ic to help it cool efficiently and also prevent it from damaging we don't have one here because we couldn't readily get some at the time we built this so what we did was we decided to charge just the batteries that are a bit higher and don't need so much charge to get to full charge in your case consider getting something like that to cool down the ic so that you don't damage the ic in the long run you can use um, one of these heat sinks these small heat sinks that are made for um, stepper motor drivers to cool your tp4056 ic and this would serve your battery station for a long time to come if you learned something new here today kindly give us a thumbs up to show your support for this channel if you are new here kindly subscribe to stay in touch on how to design and build more cool stuff see you next time